بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My beloved brothers, my sisters, the last time we were in Kumasi, I think this central masjid was not looking the way it looks like today. So that is a gift of Allah. If you recall, we were outside in the courtyard and we delivered a lecture outside. Do you remember? It was exactly six years ago, almost to the day. I think yesterday or the day before was six years. Exactly. And so, mashallah, I'm so happy to be here to see you, to see your faces and to grant you, meaning we ask Allah to grant us all the goodness and the reward of loving each other for his sake. But the question I have, what's the point of me coming to this place? What is the point? What do you think? Why are we here? Wallahi, we are here to remind each other about Allah. That's it. We are here to remind each other about Allah. So if you have come here, you need to leave this place with a better connection with Allah. Then we have succeeded and we are successful in our purpose of visit. But if we are coming here so that I can quickly take a selfie or we are coming here so that I can quickly see what this person looks like, then we need to change the intention and idea and inshallah, we will make sure that we correct it, that we are here in order to earn the pleasure of Allah, to remind each other of, of who? Allah. Allah. Of who? Allah. Of who? Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So my brothers, my sisters, today we have lots of facility as compared to before some time back we did not have electricity now we have electricity some time ago we did not have mobile phones now we have mobile phones some time back we did not have water from the tap now we have water from the tap some time ago we did not have hot water now we have hot water some time ago we did not have solar panels that generated electricity put, put it into an inverter or battery now we have all of that do you agree Allah is making things easy for you and I but why is it that the more Allah makes things easy the lazier we become when Allah is giving you so much of ease you have hot water from the tap you have electricity you have so much facility you have such a lovely masjid you have better clothing, you have a better vehicle or a motorbike or a car or a bicycle, but Salatul Fajr, we are sleeping. Is it fair? It's not fair. Salatul Fajr, we are what? We are what? Look, everyone is saying they are sleeping. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Be careful. That was examination question. You failed question number one. You are supposed to say we are awake. Salatul Fajr, we are what? Amen. Allahu Akbar. Now we are learning. Mashallah. 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 Salatul Fajr, we are awake. We want to fulfill salah for Allah, the sake of Allah. Rak'ata al Fajri khayrun min al dunya wa ma fiha. The two units of Salatul Fajr, the Sunnah before Farad, is better than the whole world and whatever it has. It's better than everything you have. And you know. The caller who calls for Salatul Fajr adds one sentence into the Adhan. What is that sentence? As-salatu khayrun min al-nawm. Allahu Akbar. Have you heard that? Have you heard that? You want to say it with me? Salah is better than sleep. Salah is better than sleep. Who is saying this? 
It is taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was given revelation from Allah to remind us, Hayya al-falah. Come to success. You want success? You want happiness? You want joy? You want contentment? Allah says the solution is to come to pray. If you are connected with Allah, Allah has the key to the door of your success. Hayya ala al-falah. Come to success. Who is telling you come to success? Wallahi, it is your maker, Allah. Allah. So if you really think you are successful, but you don't pray, in actual fact, you are not successful. Your business is flourishing, but you don't pray. There is no success. You have so many nice things, but you don't pray. No success. But if your business is okay and your salary is okay, I can just manage to buy my food and pay my rent, few things, and I am praying five times a day, Wallahi, you are better than the one who has a beautiful bungalow, but he doesn't pray. Because this world is temporary. You die, I die. Your money will not help you, mine will not help me, unless I did what Allah told me to do with that money. When I am humble and I respect people and I fulfill my prayers and I have a connection with Allah and I worship Allah alone and I try my best to follow the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is true success. That is true success. When Allah speaks about success, He speaks about all these good qualities and habits. Never ever did Allah connect eternal success with the amount of money you have. Because it is temporary. Who did Allah love more? You and I or Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who does Allah love more? Allah loves Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than he loves us. That was the most beloved. Afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli. The most beloved unto Allah. The highest of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. Allah Almighty decided to send him to humankind at a time when there was no electricity to show you that the true value is not of the electricity. Allah decided to send him at a time when there was no technology like we have it today. Today, look at the phones. Mashallah, all those brothers up there with their phones. And down here and all the sisters up there with their phones and and them down here we have our phones for us wallahi your phone can either make you or break you it can either take you to Jannah or it can either lead you to the other side what is on the other side what Jahannam May Allah make it easy. So when you use this device, be careful because it is another door of shaitan and it's a very big door, very big door of shaitan. If you don't use it correctly. So my brothers, my sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not have the technology we have, but his success was greater than ours. Today, when you have a thousand followers, you are happy. If you have a million followers, you are famous, right? Wallahi, he has had billions of followers without technology. How is that? Allahu Akbar. Billions of followers without technology. Nabi of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You and I, we have all this facility, everything. We have cars. Today, we were talking about the flights going back to Accra because we need to go to Accra because there is another program that we have at 3 p.m. in Accra. At what time? 3 p.m. in Accra. So we were talking about flights. The 12.30 flight, it's about 1 o'clock, I think, so that we can get there for 2 and go to our event at 3 and subhanallah, 
How far is it? It is so far. Someone said, maybe there might not be a flight to go back. It can happen, right? Does it happen? It happens. They say the clouds are low, the weather so on. May Allah make it easy. We want everyone to benefit. I want to be in Kumasi and after two hours, I want to be in Accra. Inshallah. Say Inshallah. Now, because you said Inshallah, I'm sure we will end up going. So I can let you know something that gift of Allah. If we can't fly, Hajj Muntaka said we will go by road. It's okay. Maybe it's three hours, maybe maximum four hours. We can go by road. Wallahi, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to leave Medina and get to Makkah in how long? Eight days. How many days? Eight days. The distance is the same from Kumasi and Ak to Accra. Same distance. The flight is 40 minutes, 50 minutes. Mak meaning Medina to Jidda, right? Eight days. Yet Allah loves him more than he loves us. Why did Allah not give him technology and put him at a time when there are cars and aer aeroplanes and so on? If he was in our midst, we would have made sure that he has the best aircraft. Agreed. But he's not in our midst in that sense. This technology is given to us. Do you know why? To test us. Are you going to get closer to Allah? Or are you going to be distracted? Distracted. There is something called TikTok. Have you heard of it? Do you know why they call it TikTok? Let me tell you. Time. What does time do? The second hand. Have you seen it? It moves. And you are just flicking TikTok. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Before you know it, your salah is gone, your another salah is gone, your day is gone, your night is gone, the next day is gone, your week is gone, your friends are gone, your iman is gone, everything is gone, your life will also go. And you wasted it on what? I am here in the house of Allah to tell you it's okay to use technology for as long as you know you need to be in control. Look at good things. There are so many really beneficial things on TikTok. So much. You can learn a lot from Instagram, from Facebook, from all of you can learn so much, but make sure you learn and make sure you don't abuse and make sure the time that you are on it is governed and controlled in a way that you don't miss your salah and you don't ignore your mother and father and you don't ignore your children and your brothers and sisters and you don't distance yourself from the Quran and so on. Use technology. It's very good. It's important. But control. Be disciplined. And make sure you know how to use it. Because you will see a video of some Imam saying something that does not make sense. And you think, let me believe it. Or maybe this Imam is not a good Imam. Look, he's changing Islam. Yet that video can be made by someone who does not like him. And it can be fake. And it can be artificial intelligence. And it can be a voice that is created that is similar to the voice of the person you know. So you need to know how to use technology. If you don't know how to use it, do not use it because it will cheat you and deceive you. If I ask you how many of you know how to use technology, all of you will put up your hand. Am I right? Okay, let's ask you the question. How many of you know how to use your phone? Put up your hands. Now you are scared to show me your hand. Right. Those who do not want to put up their hands, bring your phones here. Inshallah, we will take all of them and we can give them to others. Are you prepared to bring me your phone? Some are saying yes, some are saying no. Subhanallah. 
May Allah make it easy. My brothers and sisters, we have a gift of Allah. It is an amazing gift. Allah has made life so easy for us. One after the other. Things are easy. You get up, you have hot water. You can have a shower. You can get so easily to the masjid. But still we don't go. We are not participating. We are not connected to each other. Come on, we are one family, one big family. We are supposed to solve our matters and problems, respect each other. Look at those who are struggling. What have you done to help them? We like to show off our good deeds. So sometimes we say, my brother, take the camera, take the camera, put it in front. I'm coming to this person. I'm going to give them one dollar. I want you to show the people how I'm giving the dollar. So now you walk, walk, pretending, pretending like it was all just uh, natural, but it's not natural. It was arranged. And then you want to walk and show the people, wonder, oh, how are you? I'm fine. Ah, what do you need? Ah, here is the money. Subhanallah. What subhanallah? You should be saying, a'udhu billah. You know why? You are showing off. What do you want to show off for? If someone else gave you the money to say, please give it to someone, to some, a third party, maybe you can take a picture to show that I gave it. That's fine. But if you want to show off and boast, then you are losing your good deeds. No boasting in Islam. We are not showing off our deeds. We don't want to do something for anyone besides Allah. A riya to show off is a form of association of partners with Allah. It is wrong. So let's do things between us and Allah. When we want to show off and we want to show the whole world I'm doing sujood, I remember there was one man Long back when we first saw the photos, when he was going to sujood, one hand was on the phone like this and the other hands were down. The other hand was down and the legs were down. Umirtu an asjuda ala sab'ati a'zum. The hadith says, I have been instructed to do prostration on seven bones. Do you know what are the seven bones? One is that of the face, the forehead and the nose. Then the two hands that makes it three. Then the, the knees which makes it, which makes it five. And then the tips of your toes, which makes it seven. But if you have a phone in one hand, it's only six. It's only how many? Six. Imagine you are going to sujood, phone in one hand. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Nowadays, at least that doesn't happen as bad as that. But sometimes someone else is videoing. Yes, if it is just a normal video, no problem. But if you are planning to show off, then there is a problem. Why I'm saying this is because my brothers, my sisters, I want Jannatul Firdaus and you want Jannatul Firdaus. For Allah to give us Jannah, for Allah to give us Jannah, a preparation is required. That preparation will bring about the mercy of Allah. Allah's mercy will come if we prepare properly, fulfill your salah, do good deeds, Look at those who are around you, solve problems. Allah has given such a great reward to people who like to solve problems. You want to solve a problem? Allah says, I will give you a reward. Are you going to bring people together? I will give you a reward. Are you going to try to bring the ones who are not talking to each other? They are not on talking terms. Are you going to try to bring them on to talking terms? I will give you a reward, a great reward. So if you want Jannah, you need to get the mercy of Allah. If you want the mercy of Allah, you need to do lots of good things. And then work on your bad ways, bad habits. Cut them out, change them. Don't speak words that are displeasing to Allah. Bad words, abusive words. If you want to say bad words, lies, deception, swear words. People use swear words so much today. Do they use them in Kumasi as well? Swear words. They use them. A'udhu Billah. Is it true? You mean you use swear words here in this city? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Some people said no. No is a swear word in another language. May Allah grant us ease. Be careful what you say. Anyway, the point I want to raise is the tongue is one of the most important organs of the 
body. من يضمن لي ما بين لحييه وما بين فخذيه أضمن له الجنة. Whoever guarantees me correct use of the tongue and correct use of the private parts, I will guarantee him paradise. That is a statement of Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now, if you have sworn or you have fallen into adultery or something immoral, what do you do now? While I tell you what you do now, you seek forgiveness of Allah and you change your life. Allah says, we will forgive you. We will forgive you. Seek forgiveness and change your life. You shall be forgiven and Allah will grant you a new opening by his will and mercy. Are we prepared to seek the forgiveness of Allah? Are we prepared to seek the forgiveness of Allah? Yes. May Allah forgive us all. We start a new leaf. We should be here for prayer. Look at how lovely the masjid is. Those who are living around and nearby, fill it up. Fill it up, not just on Friday. And you find the mercy of Allah will descend upon us. When the ulama and the scholars, they have lessons and lectures, go and attend in person. I know that you are perhaps online, you have lessons as well, you have lectures as well, but it is important that some of your time you spend it physically with the scholars. It is important. You must go and learn because Allah's blessings will descend on you. That is the mercy of Allah. So, my brothers and sisters, every one of us is responsible for himself and herself. When you go in front of Allah, you will not be able to avail another person. Rather, you have to talk for yourself and you will answer your own questions. So Allah is going to ask you a good way of preparing for the meeting with Allah is by seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Don't lose hope. No matter what you did, your past is your past. Leave it in the past. You did some mistakes, big ones, small ones, medium ones. It's okay. Let it move back. It's history. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. And you know what? I move forward. I'm not going to look back. I'm going to move forward. When I move forward, I will achieve the pleasure of Allah. When I achieve the pleasure of Allah, everything becomes better for me. Allah will make me happy. Allah will give me contentment. Allah will grant me the best of this world and the next. That is how you achieve the peace, tranquility and contentment that we are searching for. And the last point I'd like to mention is. In order for us to be united with one another, we need to understand the meaning of unity. Unity. People say Muslims are not united. People are not united. What do they mean? In reality, a few minutes ago, I saw people walking past here. They were all wearing the same clothing. Did you see them? They were wearing the same clothing. That clothing is called a uniform. It's called a what? A uniform means it's exactly the same. Everyone's wearing a white top, black and white. And there we are, or a certain color. A lot of the schools, they have uniforms. The uniform is the same color. Everyone must be the same color and everyone must have the same shoes and all of that. That is called uniform. It's called a what? A uniform. For me to be united with you, I do not need to be uniform. Uniformity and unity are two different things. Some people think when we are exactly the same, then we are united. No, we will never be exactly the same. To be united, you need to respect one another. You need to disagree respectfully. That's what it is. I don't agree with you, but my brother, I care for you. Let's talk about this matter and so on. But the minute I swear you, I cannot be united with you because now I'm not respecting you. The minute I insult you, I am not united with you. The reason is, I am not respecting you. So unity comes with respect. Unity comes with tolerance. Unity comes with 
Diversity. Diversity means we are different, completely different. But we are united. We care for each other. And we believe that together we will be able to achieve goodness in this world and the next. So we can be united. Today we are sitting in the masjid. There might be people from different schools of thought who are sitting here. Are we not united? We, we disagree sometimes on some matters. It's fine. To disagree is normal. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum disagreed on some matters. But they respected each other. They knew that if this person's interpretation of something is an acceptable interpretation, Alhamdulillah, let's leave them. We are united. I might have a different opinion, but I need to be united. I don't have to be the same. So do not mix up uniformity and unity. Uniformity is when you are identical, when you are the same, everything is one. We will never be like that. We will never be like that. But unity can only be achieved when you respect each other. So much so, people who belong to other faiths, we don't agree with some of their beliefs. They belong to another faith altogether. But the fact that we are living in one city or one country or one earth, we offer them respect. What type of respect? I respect the fact that you are a human just like me. I disagree with you regarding certain beliefs, regarding certain things you have said, but I respect you. I will honor you and fulfill your rights accordingly. Accordingly. So that is a teaching of Islam. That is a teaching of Islam. May Allah Almighty make us strong Muslims. And may Allah Almighty bless every one of us. And may Allah Almighty grant us the best of this world and the next. When would you like us to return to Kumasi? Because last time we returned after six years. So now, after how many years? Some are saying next year. Some are saying next week. Some are saying always. Oh, you see when they say always, it means they want you to what? To live here, to stay. To stay. But I want to tell you something. There are ulama who are staying here and you don't respect them. So if we stay here, maybe you will not respect us. Better we go and come back after six years so you can respect us. Right? Am I right? So if you start off by respecting the local scholars and we see it, we will want to come to your city. Right? So let's do this. We will come after six years. But for these six years to come, you respect the local ulama. When you respect them and we see, wow, Kumasi is a place where they respect their local ulama, we might decide to become local. It's fair. Okay, six years is too much. Someone is saying six years is too much. Okay, let's cut it down to three years. Is it fair? No. no. Three years is too much. Okay, inshallah. Let's do, let's do a good deal. Do you like good deals? We, we are bargaining, am I right? We are good at bargaining, right? Malam Abu Bakr, where is he? Inshallah, Inshallah, next year, let's try to come. So we have a good deal. Imagine you people are so good at bargaining from six years to one year. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Inshallah, if Allah wills, you must remember when you promise and you say Inshallah, you will try your best to fulfill your promise. If Allah Almighty makes it happen, it will happen. But I really love the, the, the ambience. This masjid is amazing. The facility is beautiful. Next time we will move this behind and get you to come even more in Inshallah. But make use of the masjid while we are not here. What a lovely facility. Just look, look at these lights. Look at how beautiful the carpets are. Look at the space there is. The sound is nice. Agreed. Everything is beautiful. Why don't we make use of this? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I spoke for exactly 30 minutes. And now I end saying subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. 
نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته